wanted this so bad last night. It was it got down to 48 degrees at two in the morning. Uh, but I had this up top buried somewhere. The propane tank was in the front, and I couldn't even find the hose. I looked for it. It was actually in the back compartment by all the hoses and stuff, so I couldn't I couldn't do it easily. But it is time to get this guy ready. Tonight's gonna be cold again. Even though in the daytime it's still over 78 degrees, at night it's getting cold. It is. So I, I kept this thing covered for the entire summer season because last year I think the dust affected it. But I'm going to fire it up out here, hook it all up, make sure it's all working, and then I'll reinstall it back in the RV like I had last winter. Again, the reason why I don't use the onboard furnace is because the fan that blows the air is so inefficient and you're using it at night when you don't have solar, so you're just killing your batteries and they can't replenish until the sun comes out the next day. So if I only want to use heat at night, that's the only time where I don't have unlimited power to run the fan. So this thing is a lot more convenient for me. However, when I'm making coffee, oftentimes when if I'm running the generator for 10 minutes, that's a great time to pop the main furnace on, just let it blow hot for 10, 15 minutes. It really uh, warms up the RV a lot quicker. No fuel filter needed in this Buddy heater if you use the approved Buddy hose. You do not need the fuel filter. I do have one, just in case though. Also, it has its own regulator in here, so you do not need an external regulator between this system. This is how Mr. Heater says to do it. Obviously, keep the propane cylinder away from the heater itself and outside while this is inside. All right there, Buddy heater. Can you fire up for me this season? I know, it's going to take a while to prime you. Ah, the pilot's lit. Got to hold this down for 30 seconds. All right, we'll turn it to high, see what happens here. Yeah, it's going to light. So even if you only want it on low, you're supposed to turn it on high until the entire element uh, heats up and fills up with the fire, and then you can turn it to low after that. Oh yeah, it's putting off some good heat. Well, I'm glad it still works this year. <laughs> These guys here are considered safe for indoors. Um, but read all the directions because you gotta keep a window cracked if you're using it inside. You gotta let the carbon monoxide away to escape. Fresh oxygen to get in, so you gotta crack your window. Obviously you gotta keep the fuel source away from the heater itself. Um, other things like blankets and stuff that could fall off something and fall on top of it. A pet that could knock it over, although this one does have automatic shut off when it's tipped over. So all it takes, you know, Jax hits it, it automatically shuts off, kills the gas supply. So, I mean, it's considered to be pretty safe technically, but obviously read all of the instructions and only do what it says. Anyway, I'm going to install it in the RV. Um, using it in the winter, kind of tricky, kind of easy. Roll the passenger window all the way down. Reach into here, grab the propane cylinder, pull it out, set it right here on the corner of this lip right here, go back inside, roll the power window all the way up so that it's just open a crack so that the hose fits through. It also is my way of ventilating the propane fumes. And I'll show you the system inside. The 12 foot propane hose gives me a lot of maneuverability with this portable system inside the RV. It stores right here while traveling. I slide it back out. Put it wherever I want while I'm here in the dinette section. I can even move it all the way back over into the back, kind of aimed towards the bed at night if I wanted to as well. The only change I'm going to make this winter is I am going to cover it at all times, kind of as a way to prevent dust and cat hair from developing on the actual ceramic, not ceramic, but that heat pad right there. Uh, try to keep it working properly all winter. What? Does Jax want heat? Is Okay, is heat going to be good? Okay. Not right now. It's, it's warm enough right now. Okay. What? Come here. Come here. Come here. Such a good kitty. Hey guys, still out here in Vermont at the campground in the National Forest. I've got a little project to do today. But first, I have to kind of admit that I may have made a little mistake. I don't like to do things quickly and then correct them later, but that's exactly what I'm going to do in this circumstance. I'm going to tell you why. Now, I 
got the second panel and decided to make them more symmetrical side by side like this. Both of them now tilt up like this so that I can get uh, gather a lot more of that winter sun when it's a little lower to the atmosphere in the winter time down south. Problem is, once this one's up, it's basically blocking any sun that this panel would be able to get at the same axis. So this arrangement was a terrible idea. It's my fault. Uh, made a mistake. So I'm going to move that panel over here so that I can get more sun um, and get all the sun over here and not have either panel shaded. Um, the difficulty with it is, is I'm just going to have to drill six more holes into the roof, which obviously everybody is going to yell and complain and say, I'm just drilling more holes. I'm going to patch them up. It's going to be okay. Uh, it has to get done this way. And hopefully somebody can learn from my mistake. If you're thinking about doing something like this, plan it out, practice them. Uh, wait till the sun gets low enough and make sure the back panel gets any sun. But anyway, grab my tools and we'll get started. got everything uh, fixed up here, uh, adhered to the roof. I got both panels tilted the way they're going to be tilted, just like that. And I got all everything sealed. And as you can see right here, my self-leveling sealer. Might not look pretty, but it'll all flatten out and look normal like the rest of the roof. A little bit of extra work, but I couldn't have done this at a Walmart parking lot. So yeah, it just worked better for me. Uh, in case you're wondering, I do have a visitor, actually an old friend from Washington. Um, who was down at Traveler's Camp Fest last year and will be down in Texas this year. So it's kind of interesting to see him over here on this side of the uh, states again. So anyway, that's cool. Good to have company. Okay, let's see. Also, this is the way they're going to be folded down. Uh, these brackets that I have that, that keep it tilted are a little different length. So that's why I had to move it back a little bit. Maybe I can uh, find a tool. Somebody has something to cut this so they're not... I mean, it doesn't matter. It just looks weird. It looks a little different because they're longer than the ones that are over there. But um, I'm still going to be bungeeing them from now, from corner to corner, to keep them from flying up on the road. Although they are pretty heavy, I don't know if they necessarily would, but still. Um, and then I'll just kind of rotate the angle of the bungee every month so I don't kill cells in these. And eventually I will come up with a better idea. Um, straps or some other way to secure them while driving. But hey, it works. Grilled cheese. <laughs> I love it. Always makes me miss somebody special because we always, we both like grilled cheese so much, but yeah, soon, soon. It's all good. Anyways, I've spent three days out here. Mm, I think through the magic of YouTube, it might look like I've only spent two days out here back to back. Anyway, Vermont is nice. It's been nice. Uh, but I do want to get over into New Hampshire. These are just small slivers of states to get me east. So um, I will see you guys in a couple days. And we'll probably be heading into New Hampshire either tomorrow or the next day. But I'll have that video for you ready to go. Anyway, thanks for joining me on the journey, guys. See you in a couple days. Hey, guys, this is Jax, my kitty cat. I'm his servant, Eric. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel here on RVing. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe. Check out all our other videos. And keep following us on the road. Thanks, guys.